I'm Corbin Bailey. And I'm Patrick Bailey with IQList.com. Today is June 3rd, 2018. In this video, I'm going to get my son's assistant to uh, do a little bit of open SCAD to design a snowman to print out on our 3D printer. Okay, for those of you who may be unfamiliar with, with open SCAD, you know, what is open SCAD? Why would you want to use it? Just, what does it do? Uh, open SCAD is an open source program out there right now, which allows you to basically make 3D designs as a program. So you can say things, uh, you know, draw a sphere at this location, draw a square at this location, uh, draw a square at this location, but subtract it from this sphere. There's a lot of cool things you can do. And so you can have just a little bit of short code to actually design a 3D design. So I think it totally has a place in the 3D arsenal and we're using it uh, for homeschooling right now. Uh, there's three different tools we've been going through. We've been doing um, Fusion 360, uh, which I've been doing with both my kids. My daughter's 10 years old, so Fusion 360 is a little hard, hard for her, but she's doing, she can do it. My son Corbin here has been doing Fusion 360, and you like it, right? Mm -hmm. You like it a lot. It's a lot. And it's an industry tool. It's easier. Easy, easy and open SCAD, at least at first. Um, and it's an industry tool. Uh, really good. We're also been doing Tinkercad, which my wife, my wife, my daughter likes a lot better uh, because she can do all the little cool stuff. She feels more empowered. Um, not as powerful as Fusion 360, but you can do a lot of stuff. So we're teaching that one too in our in our homeschool. Um, but we're also starting to get more into Open SCAD to teach them that too. They've been doing coding a little bit in the past before, so that it's not unfamiliar to them. But it's kind of nice. So you can go down here, download this tool, and then you can write a little bit of code uh, to design something. The nice thing is it's really repeatable, and the files, the code is very small, and it's getting used a lot in industry. I didn't realize this, you know half a year ago, but it looks like all the Prusa uh, 3D printed parts are designed in Open SCAD, so they can have that consistency and they can version them. So it's really, really cool and definitely something worthwhile to look into and learn. Um, so anyway, so that's that's what Open SCAD is. So if you if you want to get it, go to openscad.org, download it and start coding away. So with that, let's go um, start designing our snowman. Okay, so let's go over our design here that I gave my kiddos. And uh, first of all, though, before we do that, they on OpenSCAD, they have a cheat sheet website. So here is the URL for that. And I use this a lot. We'll probably use it a lot right now. And what they have here is all the functions and, and uh, just a big cheat sheet for OpenSCAD. So you can get on here and see whether Sphere and Cube is. So it's a good thing to keep, keep uh, open and referenced. Uh, now for us, for our design, here is the design I came up with. I want to keep it simple, so I have a little snowman here. And so the idea was, I guess I'll zoom in here, is that we'd have three circle, three spheres on top of the other one, um, and that we wouldn't do anything fancy with them, we'd just position them. And then we'd have a base of some kind, because otherwise it's going to fall over. And I think I made up a, here we go, I made up a square base, but you didn't do a square base, you did a, I did a, cone. a cone base. Uh, but I just want to give my kids an idea and let them, you know, explore. Now, I also designed a little top hat for them that'll be like little cylinders. Uh, and then, then I showed my kids, I did one myself. And in, in a class, I showed my kids how I did it. And I let them free range and kind of go do it themselves and show it to me. And if they asked for help, they asked for help. Um, but anyway, that's our design. And so with that, I'll hand the reins over to Corbin and he can show you how to make a snowman. So when we want to start making the snowman, since we're using the shapes, um, we can use one of these, uh, special variables, and we can use number of fragments, and fragments is basically just a fancy word for the number of faces or sides that you have on the shape. So we can type that in on our first, uh, line. And you should follow the... You should follow the code that it shows you, and the amount of faces I I probably recommend is thirty, mm -hmm. thirty to forty, and we always close it out. And just to show you what it does, we'll do a sphere, oh, yes, yes, there you go. and we'll make the. We'll make a sphere, and you can always use the cheat sheet. And to make the sphere a certain size, you can use the radius. So I'll do a radius of 40. And it should 
show up with the circle. Now to show you an example of the faces, we'll bring the faces down to five. And it just lowers down the the faces yeah, show the inside top. of it. Yeah, if you show it from the top, it basically is the details. So you can see here it's got five sides. Mm -hmm. And now the only reason you want to change that is as your design gets more complex, it takes longer to render. So when you push the render button, uh, it takes longer to render. So sometimes you might have to do your design and position everything and then put that at a low number so that it will actually render quickly so you can make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. And then when you're done, you put a bigger number in there. It's sort of like the quality of the quality. image. But you know what's kind of cool? You could actually go make a snowman. Mm -hmm. We should do this at the end. Go make a snowman. Get it all nice and round. And then go to turn the faces to like five. Because if you wanted to, you could use it to make a little weird angle snowman. We won't, we won't cool. print it, but it's kind of cool to show. Because you can actually use that and actually will make it angly, which is kind of cool. Now, what's weird about this is that the circle actually goes into this line right here. And this line is supposed to represent where your object will be printed on. So we actually need to raise this circle up a little more. And the way we do that is we use transformations and translate is a good way to do it. Uh, you have the X, Y, and Z. So we need to change the we, the Z. So we'll do... Oh, we've got two S's. So a simple way to think of translate is translate is like move where I'm going to start drawing stuff. So like translate means I'm going to go over here and now I'll start drawing. And so there you go. And you should always uh, use the don't cheat need, don't sheet. Need a semicolon. And you should always use the cheat sheet. Helps a lot. And we can put these squiggly lines just to see what we're working with. Now this should bring the circle up. There you go. Cool. Perfect. Now one thing to note, because we can do this real quick. So here, remove the squiggly lines because this is interesting to show. When you do a translate, what translate will do is the next thing you draw it will be in that position. So if we, if we rerun this, we'll get the same thing. So here, rerun it. But if we put another sphere below this, like a sphere of 20 or something, oh, cancel. You know, we should do it. You know what? Let's do a cube because we're going to move it. Let's do a cube. So do, I have to go look at the cube. I forget what it does. Cube size. Uh, cube with depth center. How about cube with depth center? There you go. Let's do that one. So cube. Cube like, oh, with depth. So like, I don't know, 50, 50, 10 maybe. Let's try that. So make it, I think it'll make it a little flat. So that'll show how we can, oh, we got the wrong square bracket. There you go. I think that'll work. Let's go make a. Oh, and then we want to center it too. So let's. Oh, no, let's leave it where it is. Let's leave it where it is. So you can see, if you do translate, it moved the the sphere one, but then the next thing you drew went back down to zero zero zero. Uh, so if you want to translate and draw a bunch of stuff, you can use the, the curly bracket. So if you do a curly bracket, so let's show. Let's do a curly bracket on the top. And then curly bracket on the bottom, you'll see that square move. So it's nice to nice to know that. So now that should go right in the center, I think. There you go. So it depends on what you want to do. Uh, I prefer always doing curly brackets, even if you're just doing one thing, because there's a, then there's really no question of what you're doing. That's my that's the programmer in me. Um, but anyway, so back to drawing the snowman. So. You, you got the first, you got the, his bottom, his feet, snowman feet. So you could do the way that he told you, but another uh, simpler way, it's sort of excessive, but you can ju just do another translate and it should work exactly the same way. You can get, uh, get a little bracket yeah. there. It should work the same way. So it should create a, a sphere. So the second and part. we need to make it smaller. So yeah. we'll go by 10. Try that out. And then it 
start back in your code. Do you see it? And it's not the, it, it sh this open SCAD shows you some of the, the bugs in your code, which is nice. So there we go, cool, that's about right. So you could just do the swirly brackets or you can do translate, yeah. but it depends on what you want to do. Yeah. So we can finish on the second one and we'll make this, we'll do, we'll bring this a little higher so that we don't have a smushed head. Yeah, let's try that. And then, oh, yeah. why do I keep on messing that up? It just takes time. Okay, and then, so what's the, how big is the last, is the head going to be? Uh, it should be 20. 20. Okay, cool. So now, and then we should have Snowman. Maybe. Just thinking. A snowman. That looks like a snowman. Okay, now, next thing we should probably give him a base, otherwise he's going to fall over. So, uh, the way you can make a base, you can make a cube and just flatten it down, but I think the cylinder is way more easier. But okay. what's weird with the cylinder is that it has two different heights. So two you have the numbers. height of the top and the height of the bottom, so you can make sort of a cone... And I think I like the cylinder way better. Well, here, let's show an extreme cylinder, because on the cylinder, you can set the height of the cylinder, and you can set the radius of the bottom circle and the radius of the top circle. So you can actually make a conic shape, and I guess what you did, so, is, yeah, we'll make a giant one, why not? That would be... It's probably going to be a little too big. We'll try it to see what it does. Because I always forget which one's which. That's going to be huge. It's probably going to take a while to render. Yep, and it covered up our snowman. Mm -hmm. But here, do the... Here, go back to the um, cheat sheet. Because if we look at the cylinder, so there's rate R1, R2. So that the first one's the first radius, the second one's the second radius. So I think R1 is the bottom. Let's go change R2 to a lower number, and then we should get a, a conic shape, so we can, I think... Yeah, let's just make sure we're thinking the right ballpark. It should. Think, I think, I think. Yep. Oh, no, other way. I was thinking that way. Okay, so the radius, the first radius is the top. Mm -hmm. I had it backwards. Dun, dun, dun. Just thinking. There. Cool. Okay. Yeah, so that's oh, oh, wait. the shortening. That's no, the bottom. Height. That's... Oh, here, go back, click on here. I, I'm totally wrong. Uh, the first one's the height. Sorry, I got that wrong. First one, the height. Then the radius. Yeah. On the bottom. Okay, so that's right. So, yeah. Height, bottom. Top. Okay, I was messing that up. Height, bottom. That's why I use the cheat sheet. So, okay. we don't want the height to be taller than our snowman. So it needs to be shorter than 130. So probably do 50. And we want this to go sort of up so that you don't have this giant cylinder going through. I mean, you can do that, but it depends on what you want to do. I think this will work. And that should make a hat. Oh, let's do the base first. Okay. Yeah. Because with the base, we'd have a snowman. That wouldn't fall over when we print it. I mean, you could print this circular snowman, but he'd need supports, and it probably wouldn't look very good. So this should make a base. And also with these designs, you know, I'm trying to figure out a design for kids to do that is going to print well and not fail. And I think this will, you know, not have like arms coming out and things that are really hard and difficult. Oh, there you go. Okay, I so mean, now he's got a little, it's like a snow globe. We could pro probably take this out a little more. Yeah, okay, go for it. Change your design. Actually, I, I, no, I like it that no. way. Okay. Yeah. So then, hat. 
Yeah, so we need to make another cylinder, and this cylinder is going to be really tall. Um, so can you explain what the cylinder, how you're going to do it? Uh, I'm going to make it shorter than that neck, because if the neck... Where's my mask? There. So we need to make it shorter than the neck. Because if we make it too big and there, you will see this sort of like line there. And we don't want that because it'll just make that, it'll, it'll fill in the neck. And we don't want the, it to fill in the neck. So we need to bring it out sort of taller than the snowman so it needs to be taller. So the height, 150. And it needs to be sort of skinny in and it needs to be smaller than 20 because that's the head size mm. so 14 is good and it should come up with sort of a at the brim of the hat maybe i forget just thinking 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 yeah that's the brim of the hat okay cool so that's the brim of the hat and then we should make another cylinder that's even taller than the brim to make it look like a snowman. So the height needs to be taller, 170, and it needs to be skinnier than 14 and 20, so 9. And... And I think that has the snowman. We should get a snowman. Yeah. There you go. Cool. Now here, I want to show something because it might be a little difficult to understand what we just did. So we could have used, we could have made like a little hat, but we'd have to translate. We have to move, we have to move all the way up here and start drawing that hat. But we didn't do that because it turns out what we did. Anything that's inside this snowman, you just don't see it. So if we go here, and I'll just, if I go here and comment out all the spheres, and even that big cylinder that we put at the bottom. And just run it. What we did, oh, not that one. Okay. That's the base. That's the base. Mm -hmm. Oh, because I did a train. Oh, because it's taking these translates. Ah, that's why. Let me get rid of all the translates. Because yeah, translate apply to the next one. Ah. Okay. So those cylinders actually start at the bottom and go all the way up because the snowman's just. It's inside the snowman, so you don't see it. You don't see it. Yeah. So it, it saved us from doing a translate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me, let me go back and fix your design. It's kind of a little weird to think about like that. But it's kind of cool. It's an easier way to do it. Oh. Okay. Than finding... Messed up. Oh, did I do... Oh, that's a capital T. Oh. Did I do caps? <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> what was that? I know. <laughs> oh, we, wait, no, no, no. Here, here. Remove that translate and remove that sphere. Okay. Just put a comment here to do slashes. That's kind of funny. Oh, get it from the S. Well, here, run it, run it, because it'll do that again. Yeah. We just took out it. We took out the bottom. That's all it is. Yeah. So it just <laughs> basically like just goes up. Stick. Okay, put it back in. That's kind of funny looking. Though. Is an R. We erase the R X now. Okay. Uh, cool. So now we have our design. We just got to save it off and then put it through and put it through the slicer. Mm -hmm. So we'll save it to an STL. We'll so call save it. Save on the desktop. Yeah. You're crowbin. And it's coming in. Something like that. And we'll save it on to the desktop. Okay, can't save. Cool. So now we have an STL file. Let's go down and open up Prusa Control. I don't know if I opened it or not. Oh, there yeah. it is. Oh, here, hit. I was doing something earlier. Here, scroll down, hit the back button, and then delete that. I was dealing with the Caribbean earlier. Okay, so let's, yeah, there you go. Make that window a little smaller. And then make those windows go away, and then we can pull it over. 
Oops. Well, that's fine. Just make that one smaller too. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you are. Corbin Snowman. Mm -hmm. And then we'll bring this. And it's a little too high. Yeah, so. we might. Uh, so how big? We, we do, last time we did this, we reduced the size by what? 70, 25, I think. So. 75%? Oh, that's a good size. Okay, so make sure we're on 0 0.2. I don't think it needs to be that dense. Go, go, to, go to standard. I think it'll be fine. Fast. Press PLA. Hit generate. Cool. And, and it says it's hard to print without supports, but... I don't think it'll be a problem. Yeah. We haven't tried it yet. But then you want to talk about switch points? Yeah, so what's cool about Prusa is that uh, let's say you want to have a sort of a snowman that just, is, just, isn't, just isn't just white, mm. but it has a black top hat. So you can actually, it'll actually show you where it's going to print and how high it's going to print it. And at a certain height, you can actually click this button and it'll add a layer for you. So the 3D printer will actually just stop right at that white layer and you can change the filament out and it'll go up higher and it'll, you can change the filament out, so print this black, and you can change the filament out to white, and you can, it'll print white until you want to make another stop. Yeah, so Kendall did this a few weeks ago, my daughter, and everything was different. I said, let's make a black base and a black hat. No, it was like a pink bottom, and then an orange middle, and a, I think what she did, it's every single color. And what's cool is that you can use the arrow keys to get an exact, but... It's, it's pretty close. If not, you go maybe with one more. Well, you gotta go click on it again. It loses control. Yeah. Oh, that's it. You got it. And then we can add a point there. And then it should stop at those two places where you can change the filament out. Okay. So we'll save the G code. Save it on desktop. Oh, yeah, we did it before. So just replace and say yes. Okay, cool. So, let's go. You ready to go print it? Yeah. Well, let's go get it printed and see how it turns out. Oh, one thing we forgot that we said we would do is to change the FN face number. I forget what they call it. It's just the faces. Face numbers. To a low number so you can get a highly stylized and see. And you could actually print a highly stylized if you want. So, let's just see what it looks like. So, you be cool. turn it down 10. Let's do a 20. Let's see what that looks like. It's probably a little blocky. Yeah. That's kind of a cool design. And it would print like that. It'd be a little blocky. Yeah, 10. It's probably going to be real blocky. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of a cool design, though. That's really cool. If that's what you wanted. Yeah. Five. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a Christmas tree. Especially with that thing. The yeah. base. Yeah. Three. One, three. Three's going to be weird. That's, that's <laughs> as, well, three's as low as you can go. That just makes a triangle. And then... Well, if you do two, you just get nothing. Oh, yeah. Go go high, because you, you can see all the details. a good idea. This yeah. is probably going to take a while. Uh, and you may want to do that, because if you really want... You know, ours will be a little bubbly. It'll be a little... It won't be super smooth. Uh, but it'll be okay. But if you want to do it super smooth, probably a hundred or more. But it, it takes a while to render. Mm -hmm. But you only have to render that one time, and then make the STL file, and it, you know, so it depends on what you want. Make a highly style, stylized one with only ten, or a real smooth one with a hundred or hundred and fifty. And you wait five seconds on the on the first one to wait. Oh yeah, we'll point that out. So in this little bit, here I'll show. While it's rendering, here it'll while it's rendering and doing things, there'll be some information here, and so once it renders, it'll actually be a how long it took to render, mm -hmm. and that's kind of nice information because you'll it's nice to know. How bad is a hundred? It's gonna take like a minute. If it's that bad, it's, if it's that bad, we'll bring it down to seventy. Well, no, we already got our design. We'll just we'll use the one we made. Oh. Oh, there you go. There, well, wait, uh, one minute, nine seconds. There you go. Here, go highlight that. One minute, nine seconds. 
ます。えー、食べたりするのえぇ、ー、ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。Because otherwise, if you, if you had this number to 100, every single time you push that button to test something, it would take a minute. And that's just crazy. That's, a pretty, that's pretty detailed. But here now, bump it down to 20. Let's see how many seconds it takes. So we go from 1 minute 9 to. Like zero seconds, it's so fast it doesn't even count. Go 40. Maybe we'll actually get a second. So it took less than a second, so let's get one that took less than a second. He's over here somewhere. Oh, there we go. And so the time is not linear. If you have 50 versus 100, it's not twice as fast, twice as slow. It's actually like, you know, maybe a thousand times slower. I don't know. So it's kind of like a, you know, it's not a straight graph. So I guess take long 50 too. is the bad point, huh? 23 seconds. Yeah, I went from like, you know, 30 was zero to 60 is 23 seconds. So big difference. Okay. Anyway, we just wanted to show that because it's kind of cool. It's also, you know, kind of cool if you want to do some highly, if you want to have it stylized and be blocky, that's kind of a cool thing to do. I don't think. Yeah, we'll do what, two. What would two do? It doesn't do two. Oh, it defaults to three. Okay, it won't go under three because it doesn't make any sense.、Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, let's go print it out. Okay, the print is done. So, first, we're going to go over the numbers. So. This print took four hours and 36 minutes to print. It took four cents worth of electricity. And it also weighs 0.062 kilograms. And so, based on that, I use that weight to base the price of the filament because I average my filament. One kilogram of filament roughly costs about 20 bucks. So, you multiply that out, you get $1.24 worth of filament for this print. And so, the total cost to print this out was $1.28. And you can show the result together. <laughs> and, there, and there is the snowman, which actually looks kind of snazzy. You know, it's kind of simplistic. It doesn't have that simplest, simplistic vibe to it, right? Yeah, I like it. In fact, I was telling your mom, telling Lisa, that I think it'd be nice to go、uh, set those、uh, facet numbers, face numbers, fragment numbers. Set the fragment number low and make it kind of like. A six or eight or something like that and print it out. Make it look blocky. Make it look blocky and then use it for Christmas. I think grandma would like that. But then she talked about rather than doing a black base, do a green base and then do a red base and be all Christmassy and make a Nah, no, no. Green base, white, red hat. A red hat.、Mm -hmm. huh. Huh. Well, we may have to go do that. So, is there anything else we want to show the other one we made?、Uh, if you were wondering. <laughs> This is Kendall Snowman. <laughs> That's Kendall Snowman. She made a square base, and he's got a little fat hat. And so there's the two different little guys. So she designed, they both designed them on their own. So you can see the circles are a little different because that was part of their assignment that week. So、and、they're both kind of cool. But of course, my daughter has to do multicolored. So everything was different color. Yeah. <laughs> But it kind of looks cool.、Uh, anyway, so. I guess that wraps that up. So that's the end of this video. Hope you liked it.、Um, and we'll probably be doing more in the future. Hey, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, give it a thumbs down. Also, if you like what we were doing here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And lastly, have a piece of info to share? Just post a comment.